Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, channel. So today I am here with uh, a master's student from aerospace engineering because many of you already asked to make a video about aerospace engineering and how is the aerospace in TU Delft. So now I am in Delft, 250 kilometers away from my home and uh, it's very windy outside because there is another storm in succession so that is the life in Delft. I'll put all the links in the info card about the weather in Netherlands and I have made many other videos about studying and living in Netherlands and Europe just check it if you want to know I'm Sambit and he is Abhatej uh, Abhatej. Abhatej, sorry. So he'll give you an intro and then we'll start with the discussion about all things which relate to aerospace engineering and you'll have a fair enough idea after the uh, discussion that how is aerospace engineering in Tudor. Right. Hi everyone, my name is Abhatej. Uh, I am from India as you would have guessed from now. I do my master's in aerospace engineering uh, at TU Delft. Uh, I specialize in the track of aerodynamics and wind, wind energy. And right now I'm in my second year doing my thesis and today we'll probably be having a chat about aerospace. And where did you do your uh, master's, eh, sorry, in ba your bachelor's in India? Uh, so I did my bachelor's in uh, <clears throat> mechanical engineering from NIT Raurkela. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty broad master's. So we'll mm -hmm. also touch a bit upon how to specialize in aerospace uh, for that matter. Okay. Maybe that's helpful for some people. Okay, let's go through our notes so that we make your life easier. <laughs> and if possible, we'll put the timestamps also of the questions that we covered in this interview. Uh, so connecting it to your master's bachelor's uh, so can you like give a brief background of uh, about the reputation and what has happened till now and when the program was dutch or english or something like that of the about the aerospace in tu delft mm -hmm. plus uh, let me put other points also in the first discussion like what are the admission requirements and uh, why you choose aerospace like your personal opinion like why you chose aerospace uh, in TU Delft only right so uh, basically like I mentioned I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering uh, I was interested uh, to do uh, to study aerospace um, from uh, the starting itself but uh, during my bachelor's I decided to pick a more broader uh, area during my bachelor's I got uh, interested in fluid dynamics and that's the reason I chose aerodynamics uh, as my specialization uh, uh, field uh, well, coming to the choice of uh, coming to the question of why I chose aerospace in uh, TU Delft was that uh, so t uh, there are a couple of reasons uh, I did that firstly uh, the aerospace master's course has always been in English mm -hmm. and the uh, faculty or the department itself has always encouraged uh, the English mode of communication. So in the in that sense it's uh, always more helpful for uh, Interna internationals compared to other European universities where language might be a barrier. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the aerospace faculty is pretty renowned in the world and uh, quite comparable to other uh, aerospace faculties in the world, um, for example, in the US mm -hmm. or Australia or those kind of places. So given um, uh, uh, some people are looking for alternatives to US and Australia, and uh, so Delft is a good option for them. And it's also a very highly ranked uh, university, so in general, uh, that's that was my uh, understanding of why I picked it. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the admission procedure, it's uh, pretty much simple. If uh, pretty much similar to uh, the admission procedure that you have in US, mm -hmm. uh, you have to write uh, a motivation letter and a, and supply a CV. You also have need uh, GRE scores. Uh, in my year, I think it was uh, 320 was the cutoff, but usually they update that on the website and for uh, newer applicants, they can check that on the website. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, English language requirements, you can either submit a, a TOEFL or a IELTS score, or you can also the submit proof that your bachelor's degree was uh, taught in English. Sometimes that is also accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, the details, of course, are always available on the admissions website of the university 
Okay. And do you know how much stuff loyalty is? Um, usually, uh, it's supposed to be around 110. Oh, okay. But uh, I think the they will also update they, uh, the... They'll probably have yeah. to be there on the website. Okay. Uh, so, before moving to the second question, I want to tell you that in the description below, you can find how you can contact <laughs> Abhratej. It's correct. Yes. Right? I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, if you need any information or something and again I'm telling you I tell this in all the video that don't bother them because they are also super busy so just ask the relevant questions which you don't get easily in a website or somewhere no don't ask something like okay recently I got a question like someone is asking like I want to start a PhD tell me what I do from the beginning <laughs> like you cannot ask this kind of uh, like very vague question so let's move to the second point So, how was the first few days or weeks in aerospace engineering when you came here? Plus, taking it ahead, how is your general experience till now? Because you are currently, I think, in second, second year, year yes. and already finished one and a half yes. years. So, maybe you will be in a very good position to tell, like... <laughs> I mean, just yeah, your sure. experience. So it can be different from person to person, but still it will help you to know. Like. Yes. So basically, when you arrive at the faculty, they uh, do they hold a master's kickoff event, like a master's orientation day specifically for the faculty. Mm -hmm. That is separate from the you know, introduction program uh, held uh, by the university. That's a general introduction program. So during the master's uh, orientation day, they... Uh, um, give you a general idea of how the aerospace master's program is structured as a whole and they also hold specific uh, presentations for uh, specific master's tracks so uh, aerodynamics wind energy uh, flight performance structures controls all of these tracks have a different presentation of their own so they uh, in that they'll tell you more about the courses and the types of uh, um, things or the research interests that you can pursue through these tracks so uh, then mostly during lectures, uh, at I can speak about uh, aerodynamics, but I presume it will be similar in other tracks as well. Uh, during the first few weeks of lectures, the professors usually try to gauge uh, uh, how much understanding you have uh, uh, of aerospace engineering and the subject matter. So uh, it is very common that in the first few weeks, all the professors will ask you about uh, what you have studied and uh, how much you have studied and they'll also try to understand whether you have covered a particular requisite uh, course or a requisite concept for a, for a particular course. Um, so that in that sense, the bridging is uh, not uh, that difficult. It's quite easy to do that. Um, they will also suggest you materials to read in case you feel you are not, uh, um, you are not um, able to bridge the gap between your bachelor's and the master's here. So that's always helpful. Um, in general, like I said, uh, professors are quite approachable mm -hmm. and uh, they also suggest you ways of overcoming certain uh, difficulties that you might have. Um, they You can also approach them for projects sometimes and sometimes that works out, but usually that is done uh, in consultation with your uh, track coordinator, the, co the coordinator who Man, who is supposed to be the man uh, supposed to be managing your master's program so once you get permission from them usually you can also do projects and uh, uh, other uh, research activities uh, with your professors and how is your uh, workload like the ECTS you have and okay. what do you really experience uh, so the workload is, uh, I would say, quite intensive for uh, aerospace. Uh, in general, uh, in TU Delft, being one of the better universities of the world, uh, the uh, workload is, in general, quite intensive. For aerospace, I think it is slightly more intensive uh, compared to other branches, or at least that's what my friends have been telling me uh, in the Masters. Mm -hmm. Uh, the thing is, uh, usually the, um, uh, compared to the ECTS reflected in your master's program, uh, the number of hours uh, that you might want to uh, might need to put in for certain courses uh, is more compared to the ECTS uh, in the program. 
so then that also takes a toll and uh, you will generally find aerospace mm-hmm. students to be very busy mm-hmm. uh, and very uh, not have the time for uh, yeah, a yeah. lot of other activities uh, but i guess we'll touch upon that maybe slightly later in the video of course okay uh, so this is very important the thing that we'll discuss now uh, is about the thesis because as i have said many times before that in most places in europe or at least in the whole netherlands you have a mandatory thesis so it's not like us you can choose a thesis or a non thesis program mm-hmm. so you have to do a thesis so that's what knowing about the type of thesis like industrial or university and what are the other points relating to the thesis and how much time you should give and uh, what is the workload how you should manage or plan all these things we'll touch upon them so that is the idea of the discussion now like uh, what is your take on the mm-hmm. thesis because you are i think you have already started I'm already 6 months in 3 months into my three okay, thesis okay. now uh, so the thing with aerospace is uh, the thesis is structured in such a way that uh, um you can do your thesis both with uh, the university or at a industry or a company uh obviously if you do it with a company you will have to find a corresponding supervisor from the tu delft who will basically gauge whether the quality of work you are doing is uh, comparable enough to a university thesis because of course the department also has to maintain certain standards uh and uh, then uh, usually once you find that it's um, very smooth uh, from an industrial thesis perspective uh for a university thesis uh, you usually approach uh, professors uh, either based on their research interests or maybe based on uh, um the courses you have taken and you feel okay this is some this is the area i want to do my thesis in and generally professors will have some project for you to do uh, for master students it's not that difficult to find mm-hmm. um even if they don't they will always suggest some other professor uh, who we can approach for the thesis so that's the starting part um for doing an industrial thesis it's usually nice to uh, contact companies um, linkedin is a very good resource for doing that but you can also just send in your cvs to uh, companies uh, doing recruitment for me it was actually a very unique situation where i had initially applied for a internship but uh, my project uh, turned out to become uh, long enough so then mm-hmm. they uh, d- uh, we, i decided that uh, i'll just convert it into a three a thesis and do a separate internship at a, at another place so then that's what happened with me and, and which company you are working with now uh, right so i'm working with uh, the netherlands um, scientific uh, investigation organization uh, it is called tno the that's mm-hmm. the that's very famous um, i mean yeah, even in the... electronics and people in telecommunication yes of... yes it's kind of like uh, i don't know if you in case uh, if in case you are mm-hmm. from india and you want to draw a parallel what kind of company tno is then it's kind of uh, all the government com- agencies like drdo or bhava atomic research center and uh, all of these government funded research agencies combined into one that's what the dutch government did and then they made tno as one of their uh, mm-hmm. like research okay. wings interesting so that's uh, just to give you an idea of what kind of work i'm doing um for the amount of hours you have to put in a thesis that's actually quite subjective depends on the kind of thesis you are doing and uh, the um, uh, topic um it obviously uh, the if you're doing a industrial thesis then you will have to put in some extra effort into uh, coordinating with your industrial supervisor and your um, university supervisor uh, that's more on the logistical side than on the amount of f like research effort you have to put in um uh, i think in terms of research effort uh, there are um, it's roughly about 60 ecs uh and that's uh, uh, supposed to be one one year uh you do a thesis that's roughly 9 months and then there is also a literature study phase involved where you kind of try to figure out what your uh, uh, detailed uh, research problem is going to be um so more more or less that's how it goes mm mm-hmm. uh okay so now let's move to the more interesting part which everyone always thinks about like uh how are the jobs internships and what are the other opportunities of getting some funding if i'm uh, if i don't have any scholarship like 
टी ए और पार्ट टाइम जॉब्स और एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट विल ऑल्सो टच अपॉन लाइक वट आर द क्लब्स और एनी रिसर्च ग्रुप्स और लाइक कम्यूनिटीज और ग्रुप्स और सोसाइटीज दैट वी कैन बी पार्ट ऑफ एंड टेक सम एडवांटेज एंड हैंग आउट टूगेदर एंड दिस कैंड ऑफ थिंग्स लाइक सो मे बी यू कैन स्टार्ट विद द जॉब्स एंड देन विल मूव टू द सोसाइटीज एंड ऑल राइट्स वेल so uh, about the jobs uh, in netherlands you have uh, uh, like as a student in the european union you can obviously apply for jobs across the european union um if you're graduating from one of the universities in the eu uh in netherlands particularly you have uh, certain types of jobs for aerospace engineers like for at least for me for aerodynamics uh, so someone from uh, from aerodynamics background uh, you have uh, jobs in wind energy as well because um, the track combines both aerodynamics and wind energy you can also apply for jobs in of course the famous aerospace companies like airbus and mm. dassault and safran and those uh, rolls royce and those kind of things um you can also get uh, a lot of consultancy type of jobs as well there are a lot of uh, um companies who hire aerospace engineers uh, for uh, solving problems for their clients as well so that's also nice um you can if you i think if you are a um aerodynamics engineer you will have to slightly broaden the scope of your uh, um scope of the jobs that you're looking for so you'll have to f- uh, venture more into fluid dynamics if you are uh, doing structures and if you are doing controls then obviously you will have uh, you can also apply in other fields because the course work is more or less similar so i would say that uh, you are getting a aerospace specialization but at the same time the course work is general enough that you can also apply in other fields mm-hmm. and at the same time you obviously have the specialized aerospace companies and and at the end of the day if you feel like it you can always go for a phd as well okay so that's also nice and regarding the salary i think for the freshers i have made a video on that you can check it out and maybe you can share anything else if there is anything i i think it is same for all the more or less or as like a starter uh, graduates uh, it's more or less same uh, across the board for all kinds of uh, branches mm-hmm. i don't think aerospace has any specific uh, like uh, high salary or mm-hmm. low salary that we get uh, which is around something like on hand something it's like around 2500 to 3000 yes, or maybe yes per like, month yeah. yes yes that's around the ballpark figure that we're going for and regarding the internships like oh. the mm-hmm. uh, for internships and also one thing i oh. forgot sorry uh, the in the previous point we discussed about industrial thesis so how much salary like the i mean like a money monetary benefits you get during the industrial thesis mm-hmm. per month from the company like so the yeah. industrial thesis and this is similar to oh, internship, so, intensive, yeah. so i'll combine both of them uh, i think that's better uh, for uh, internships uh, the uni- uh, like the university has a career center that helps you uh, aerospace also has a specific internship office that helps you uh, look for internships and um, also guides you while applying for internships that's really nice uh there's something called uh, bright space which is like a university portal and mm-hmm. on that uh, they have a specific page for internships as well where they uh, post uh, uh, internship openings or potential uh, opportunities that might be there in different types of companies so that's also helpful and that's the kind of help you get from the university side uh, and obviously uh, if all else fails linkedin is the best tool right Yeah, so like, connecting with people from companies that you think uh, you might want to work for that's also uh, in, that's also a possible option um the remuneration the monetary benefits are more or less uh, if you're in netherlands somewhere around the range of uh, 400 to 500 euros is you can expect that per month uh, per month yes and sometimes they also provide uh, travel benefits and um, some other types of allowances as well but that depends from from person to person or company to company basically um this you also get the same type of uh, monetary benefits for uh, uh, doing a thesis at a company 
because uh, companies usually or at least in netherlands the companies usually think of thesis as a longer form of an internship mm-hmm. so then um, the benefits you get are uh, usually the same it's only in the type of work that you do or the content of the work that's different if you're doing a thesis compared to as you're doing an internship okay and what about ta and part time jobs i mean part time jobs i have made in the video but if you have any additional experience you can share it but if it is within the faculty some kind of part time job that is more welcome and regarding also the ta like teaching assistants right so for teaching assistants um, well there are plenty of positions uh, advertised and usually they also post those kind of uh, openings on bright space the portal i mentioned before so that's uh, you can keep track of those kind of things on bright space um you can also find uh, um part time jobs uh, in the faculty mostly as student assistants uh, if you're not a teaching assistant so the difference between a teaching assistant and a student assistant is uh, a teaching assistant would be the specifically related to a, a particular course and so you will also be expected to have some skills that are relevant to that course for the student assistant positions it's mostly the uh, if you are for example in the student communication team for example i was writing mm-hmm. blogs for the aerospace faculty which i think we'll link in, ah, the, description. Okay, in the description below. and uh, the, uh, i used to write them for the student communication team and i was uh, documenting my experiences both as a aerospace engineer at tu delft but also as a a uh, student uh, living in delft in general mm-hmm. so i used to get paid for that as well so that's a nice opportunity i found there are also other um, and how much was it roughly like uh, per hour like so the uh, standard um, uh, wages for um, teaching and student assistants is fixed for master students mm-hmm. uh, it's usually around 14 euros uh, per hour. Uh, an hour and max uh, i think it's 16 hours per week right uh yes uh, your working permit uh, depends on the type of visa you have of course mm-hmm. uh, but usually it's uh, 16 hours uh, a week okay and what about the societies and any groups or communities inside their space mm-hmm. like right so usually um, all the master track have their own uh, study associations so for example for uh, aerodynamics wind energy and flight performance and propulsion we have one combined study association called awep um you will uh, you can probably look them up on the university website themselves mm-hmm. uh similarly other tracks also have their uh, own study associations then you also have uh, these uh, dream teams uh, that you have dream teams which are uh, uh basically teams that uh, design a particular type of thing or make a particular thing for example formula cars or uh, sp- uh rockets or those kind of things so for aerospace you have uh, the delft aerospace um, uh, rocket uh, i think it's called dare or something i i mm. forget what the full form of yeah, that I'll is but we'll put it in the, we'll description. It in the description i guess uh but uh, you can also join any other dream teams that you want to join for example the formula student team or the solar board team or those kind of things and that's pretty much open to all um, faculties you don't have to be a, uh, of a particular faculty to join these teams um the aerospace faculty also has uh, its own uh, labs where you can w- work uh, for example uh, that is this uh, control slab that, that makes unmanned vehicles uh, mm. micro micro aerial vehicles those uh, you drones. can work, uh, drones basically uh, and you can work for them um, uh, yeah, you can work part time with them of they probably don't pay you anything but it's a good uh, addition uh, to cv yeah. or for your experience or... good experience and you also always uh, can network through that there is also something that i did which is called the aircraft manufacturing lab uh, where we built uh, a vans rv12 two seater aircraft a- uh, aerospace nerds will know about it uh, the uh, those uh, we built that aircraft from scratch so that's also something that's uh, useful to have a uh, um, aircraft building experience in a controlled environment at the university itself okay that's good for your cv as well so there are many of these kind of uh, opportunities that you can probably find uh, when you arrive here or when you mm-hmm. come 
so uh, i guess it's lots of information for you to process and so finally we'll sum it up and to sum up like what are the challenges that you have seen till now based on your experience and any particular advice or things that someone should be more uh, conscious or keep an eye on before choosing tudal for a space or like any advice you want to give mm-hmm. for the incoming newcomers um i mean so um in aerospace uh, the primary defining trait of any master student of aerospace in tio delft is they have a lot of work so i think that should be something that uh, you should know up front before uh, joining aerospace here that you will have a good amount of workload and obviously the doing that work uh, that amount of workload will also get you like um good internships and uh, like a good uh, uh, career prospects later on but uh, be prepared for the workload i guess um other than that i think uh, the professors are very approachable and quite friendly and it's a general touch and uh, environment that things are quite informal mm-hmm. here compared yeah. to other european countries i would say so that's something that reflects in the faculty as well and uh, in terms of advice i guess uh, just be open to taking opportunities usually things might happen to you on uh, like on a Unexpe- unexpected things might happen to you so then uh, i think that's something that in general a master student should have mm-hmm. okay yeah. So thank you very much for giving your time for yeah, this nice wonderful time. conversation on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I hope you also like this video. So if you like this video till now, don't forget to smash the like button and share the video among your friends so that everyone knows because many of you asked about aerospace. So I guess it will help you and you can share among all your friends, relatives, friends, everyone. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And see you in. next upcoming videos next week bye